Rome Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! Document after document after document in the NSA boasts of how Collect It All is their driving mission. In fact, one document not only says what we want to do is collect it all, it says our, quote, new collection posture is collect it all, sniff it all, process it all, partner it all, exploit it all. Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Glenn Greenwald is back in the United States. It's been almost a year since his first revelations on the National Security Agency. He's out with a new book, No Place to Hide, Edward Snowden, the NSA, and the U.S. Surveillance State. The latest disclosures may surprise you. Did you know the National Security Agency is not only intercepting emails and phone calls, but the regular mail, too? Somebody orders a product from Cisco, Cisco then ships it to that person. The NSA physically intercepts the package, takes it from FedEx or from the U.S. Mail Service, brings it back to NSA headquarters, opens up the package, and plants a backdoor device on one of these devices, um, reseals it with the factory seal, and then sends it on to the unwitting user, who then provides internet service to large numbers of people, all of which is instantly redirected into the repositories of the NSA. Today, Glenn Greenwald for the hour. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The U.S. has begun flying piloted surveillance missions over Nigeria as part of the search efforts for the nearly 300 schoolgirls kidnapped last month. It's unclear how many planes are involved, but the State Department says it's providing intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance support to the Nigerian government. On Monday, a Nigerian official said the government is exploring all options to rescue the girls from captivity. All options are open. At the moment, because all options are open, we are interacting with uh, uh, experts, military and intelligence experts from other parts of the world. So these are part of the options that are available to us and many more. If it is necessary that we use uh, whatever kind of action to get our girls out of the, the captivity that they are in now, we will do it. The Nigerian government has already rejected a Boko Haram proposal to free the girls and return for the release of the militant group's prisoners. Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Shekau floated the offer in a video Monday. Wallah, billahi ladhi la ilaha illahu haula ilbanat. By Allah, these girls will not leave our hands until you release our brothers in your prison. You took our brothers four or five years ago, and now they are in your prisons. You do many things, and now you talk of these girls. We will not let them go until you release our brothers. We will not let them go. Until you release our brothers. The Boko Haram's video showed close to half of the nearly missing 300 girls. It was the first public image of the kidnapped schoolgirls since their abduction nearly a month ago. Pro-Russian groups in eastern Ukraine have asked to join Russia following this weekend's chaotic referendum for self-rule. On Monday, rebel leaders declared an autonomous People's Republic of Donetsk and called for Russian annexation, like that in Crimea earlier this year. The Ukrainian government in Kiev has refused to recognize the separatist bid. Russia has also stopped short of an endorsement and is unlikely to carry out another annexation. New studies show global warming has helped cause an irreversible collapse of the ice sheet in western Antarctica. Scientists from NASA and the University of Washington say human-driven climate change has sped up the glacier's retreat, threatening a global sea rise in the coming centuries from 4 to 13 feet. In a video released by NASA, scientist Eric Rignot of the University of California, Irvine, said the melting has passed the point of no return. We passed the point of no return, and at this point, I would say it's just a matter of time before these glaciers completely disappear to sea. This system is evolving very fast and is progressing exactly as you would you expect if it was about to collapse to sea. They're retreating at rates of about a kilometer per year. If these glaciers were sustaining this rate of retreat, they would disappear completely in a couple of centuries. 
Rising sea levels pose the biggest threat to coastal areas and low-lying island nations, which are vulnerable to surging waters like those seen in Superstorm Sandy. A bipartisan measure to encourage energy efficiency has failed in the Senate following Republican obstruction. The non-controversial bill called for new efficiency standards in federal and private buildings, but it crumbled on Monday after Republicans tried to add approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline and the blocking of new EPA regulations. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid refused to grant a vote on the amendments leading Republicans to filibuster the overall bill. Over 150 same-sex couples have exchanged vows in Arkansas following a court ruling striking down the state's marriage equality ban. On Monday, a long procession of couples tied the knot at the county courthouse in Little Rock. Words cannot really explain the feeling that we have. I mean, uh, there is so much love in that room right now and the amount of energy that is being projected by everybody. We had a ceremony about seven years ago in our home, but it wasn't recognized, of course, by the state. So this is a huge deal. I figured we'd be the last state, you know. I mean, I didn't even think we'd have a lottery. Sure enough, I'd be standing here talking to you today with my family, fixing to do one of the greatest things in the world and get to be with my wife. Now she's going to be recognized as my wife. The Arkansas ban was struck down Friday, making Arkansas the sixth state to have its gay marriage ban overturned this year. The Arkansas attorney generals appealed, but the Arkansas Supreme Court put off ruling on whether to halt the marriages until today. Texas is set to carry out the first U.S. execution since last month's botched killing of a death row prisoner in Oklahoma. Robert James Campbell, a convicted rapist and murderer, is scheduled for death Tuesday evening. As in the Oklahoma case, Texas officials have refused to reveal the source of the sedative that will be used in the lethal injection. Campbell's attorneys have asked for a stay and the lifting of the secrecy surrounding the execution drug. They've also accused state officials of hiding evidence that Campbell has an intellectual disability known more commonly commonly as mental retardation. Campbell has an IQ of 69, which falls under the standard score of 70 used to diagnose intellectual disabilities. The Obama administration has offered the Senate expanded access to secret memos authorizing the killings of Americans overseas in a bid to defuse opposition to a judicial nominee that helped author them. A number of senators have voiced opposition to the nomination of David Barron to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. While serving in the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel, Barron helped write at least two memos that underpin the government's killing of the American-born cleric Anwar al-Awlaki. But senators, including Mark Udall of Colorado and Rand Paul of Kentucky have said they'll remain opposed to Barron's nomination unless the memos are released to the public. Several New York City council members are calling for leniency in the sentencing of Occupy Wall Street activist Cecily McMillan following her conviction of assaulting a police officer. McMillan says she struck out instinctively when her breast was grabbed from behind. She faces up to seven years in prison at her sentencing next week. On Monday, council member Lori Cumbo was among five council members to voice support for McMillan. She was joined by Yetta Kurland of the National Lawyers Guild. This is a time where we have to make sure that our women are treated with dignity, with respect. We have to make sure that all law enforcement respect women, respect all individuals. But we can't any longer continue to have our women attacked in ways that are dangerous, that are harmful, that are unconstitutional. Uh, recently, somebody died in Rikers uh, because of the conditions. Um, you know, we're not able to talk directly with Cecily right now, but our thoughts are with her. And you saw a large group of people coming out today to give support and to ask the judge for leniency in the sentencing that's upcoming. Cecily McMillan will be sentenced on Monday. Nine of the 12 jurors who convicted her have written to the judge asking for leniency. The head of the International Monetary Fund has canceled a commencement address at Smith College after students and faculty voiced protest. Nearly 500 people signed a petition opposing the appearance of Christine Lagarde, calling the IMF, quote, a primary culprit in the failed developmental policies implanted in some of the world's poorest countries, strengthening imperialist and patriarchal systems that oppress and abuse women worldwide, they wrote. Following the petition, Lagarde said she is withdrawing to, quote, preserve the celebrity celebratory spirit of Commencement Day. The move comes one week after Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice canceled a commencement address at Rutgers University following a wave of campus protest. 
And a candidate in North Carolina's Democratic primary has died in a fall at his home. Keith Crisco had trailed former American Idol contestant Clay Aiken in last week's contest and was apparently preparing to concede. Aiken paid tribute to Crisco by suspending his campaign and turning his website all black. He will square off in November against Republican Congress member incumbent Renee Elmers. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Today